What is up, fellow humans of the cardboard? Today, it's deck profile time, okay? This is a deck I've been working on for a minute. Um, this is a pure version, so I, I want to preface everything by saying this is a pure version. This is at best a tier three deck, but it's a very fun one. It's a very unique deck in the way it plays. Um, and so, I, I don't know, I've just always been a fan of this archetype. Ever since I saw the artwork for them, I thought they were so, so cool. Um, I think the archetype has a lot of really cool pieces. The fact that it does almost anything without really using a normal summon, which means you could potentially add in the scrap package if you have access to it. Um, I'm, that's why I'm playing the pure version right now is because that stuff is so expensive. Hopefully I'll be able to update um, them with the scrap package so that I can show off a more competitive version of this deck because this deck pretty much has no normal summon. So adding something in uh, like, like those can be really, really impactful for the deck and add a lot of power the deck doesn't have and bait some hand traps, which is always nice. Um, but yeah, other than that, Springins, really cool deck. Um, real quick, before we jump into the profile, I'll shout out the mat one more time if you haven't seen it yet. This mat is so cool. You have Golgonda here, which is like an honorary Springin card. I am not playing it because it doesn't really work in this version, but we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. This side has Ecclesia facing down Golgonda. The other side has Ecclesia backed up by the Stigmata Dragon. And it's so, so cool. Very clean. It's my favorite mat to play on right now. If you want your own, check the link in the description. And there'll be a code down there for 10% off. That'll also send a little money my way. That'll send a little some money Charles' way because he's the guy who got the mat made uh, from Team COG. That's my boy. And uh, you'll save 10% off. So very cool. All right, moving on to the list. Let's just get into this thing. Triple for the monsters. Starting out with the monsters, of course. Triple, Springin's Rocky. He's probably the best one overall. Triple Brothers. Uh, this may not need to be a three of, but eh. I'm honestly just not sure how I want to do it. He's probably definitely shouldn't be a three of now that I'm thinking about it. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to call an audible right now because I was thinking about doing this before the video. But okay, real quick. We're calling an audible. I'll come back to that. Okay, double Pedor, he's okay. Um, he's honestly not my, he's probably the worst one overall. Uh, Branga, he's really good. He searches the spells and traps. And let's say this second, this third brothers is actually a third Captain Sargus. Um, okay, so long story short, if you don't know what they all do, they all have the same effect where they, if they're in hand, grave, or field, they can just equip themselves as material to any Spring and Exceed monster. Very, very cool. You just load materials on them every single turn, and that's never a problem. Um, as far as what they do individually, Rocky, when he's normal or special, can add any uh, Spring and's monster from grave back to hand. Brothers, uh, when he's sent from hand or deck to grave, can, full, uh, can monster reborn any Spring and monster. Pedro contribute himself to revive a Spring and monster. Branga could banish himself and another named Springin monster to search a Springin spell or trap. And Sargus has a quick effect on field where if he um, if he uh, uh, he could detach a material from a Springin Exceed, or actually from any Exceed monster, it doesn't have to be Springin, to target a card your opponent controls and destroy it. So he gets you additional disruption. Um, but yeah, other than that, they're all pretty good. Uh, as you can tell, none of them really seem like legit starters. They're all kind of like extenders and then like an end board piece. Uh, and so that's probably the biggest flaw with Springins that they don't have a normal summon um, there. If they had a Stratos, it'd be so crazy good for the deck because you'd be able to like summon it out on your opponent's end phase like pro almost every turn and um, it would get you a search. And that would be like so impactful, I feel like. Um, but unfortunately no dice but all things considered these are your pretty good monster line up here you want to play enough of them because you need to discard them for your field spell um finishing up the monsters though because this is a pure variant all we're playing is some good hand traps triple cyframe gear gamma and triple ash a uh, couple things to note here ash is just generically good don't need to explain that I never play Gamma in a deck unless that deck can actually have synergy with Gamma. It's not just, oh, I wanted a powerful hand trap. I want a deck that can do things with no monsters on the field or, or the way it does things tend to have no monsters on the field. And that's exactly what this deck does. All of Both of your Exceed monsters tag out um, and banish themselves until the end of, uh, of the turn on, their, on your opponent's turn. So that leaves Gamma um, live at some point during the duel. Almost every duel, like Gamma, will be live at some point, and it's not dependent on whether you're losing the duel or not, like getting your board wiped. It just happens that way because your deck clears itself, like your field clears itself normally. 
of monsters. So very, very cool card. I think it's a must of just because of the synergy and it's too powerful. If you can play it, you play it. Moving on to the spells, we start with three copies of the field spell, Great Sea Sand, Gold Golgonda, the card's insane. Uh, uh, actually, go back on that, let's make it four copies. Then we have three copies of Springin's Watch. Uh, this card's really cool, we'll talk about that in a sec. And same thing with the new card, Springin's Booty. Um, okay, so the cool thing about this is that all ten of these count as a copy of Golgonda. They just do, right? Booty as a continuous, it can send itself from face up on the field to grave to either uh, to activate uh, a Gold Golgonda directly from deck or grave. Very good. Um, and Springin's Watch will search Golgonda. The cool thing, though, is that they design these cards in a cool way where, like, it's not just, like, ten copies of this. So if you open multiple of these, like, you're just screwed. You just have, like, extra copies. It's a, it's a common problem I've run in, into with decks like Lair of Darkness. You want to see Lair, but you don't want to see multiple of Lair because they're kind of just, like, super redundant and bricky. Um, whereas this deck, if you see multiple of these, Watch says if you already have Golgonda, can just add a Springin' Monster and dump a Springin' Monster at the same time from deck. Very good there. And then Booty, when it's face up on the field, anytime one of your Exeed monsters is banished via card effect, uh, or actually leaves the field via card effect, you can target a monster your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of the turn, uh, which is really, really cool. So um, it makes it, it makes like Merrymaker and Explorer into actual disruptions on your opponent's turn, not just cards that tag out and will give you value later on, but actual disruptions in conjunction with this if you don't need to use it to get the field spell. So I love how they all work together, but also can still get you to the most important card in the deck uh, when you need it. So that's really, really good. Uh, opening all three is like the dream hand. Uh, because it just feels like so you're just doing everything you want to do with your first turn. Okay, uh, for ancillary spells, one Foolish Burial, one Upstart Goblin, one Harpy's Feather Duster. That's it. Thought about playing Monster Reborn, but as an extender, it's like, okay, there are hands where it just feels like it's not doing anything for you. There are, um, I don't know. It's just awkward. I thought about Called by the Grave, but... The field spell doesn't really die to hand traps except for Ogre. Ogre's the only thing, and Ogre's, like, never very popular except for, like, very specific formats. I don't think we're in that kind of format. Um, and, yeah, so those are, like, the other two things I looked at. Harpy Starlet, it's just a main deck out to, like, stuff like Mystic Mine or, like, Crazy Floodgates or just back row decks in general can be annoying to deal with. Upstart. Um, I don't have Prosperity, so I wanted to play Upstart because uh, I just want to see, make sure I see one of the 10 copies of the Field Spell as much as possible, so that's kind of that. If I have Prosperity, I would play it, but of course, this is a super, super budget deck, um, and so, like, you know, how are you going to make a budget? I just had, like, $300 worth of cards in one play set into your budget deck. Madness. Um, and that's it for the spells, okay? Uh, Foolish Burial, also, I didn't even say. Foolish Burial is pretty good. It has multiple targets. You could send Sargus to hopefully get him reborn when you use the field spell to send brothers. Um, you have Bronga. Send him just so you can get yourself uh, enough setup to hopefully search a spell or trap in the archetype with Bronga. Um, or you could send brothers to be a monster reborn. Or you could send uh, the other two, uh, Rocky or Pedor, just because you want to reborn them off of the brothers that you already know you can send. So honestly, you could end up sending any of them. Um, next up with the traps, uh, double Springin's Blast this is the only Springin' trap I'm playing. They also have another one that's essentially Call of the Haunted for Springin's Monsters, but it just doesn't feel like it does anything. Like, theoretically, the only thing it could be doing that's actually impactful is either reborning Sargus on your opponent's turn because you were able to put him in Grave but not keep him on the field so that we can get his, like, Dryden effect alive. Or reborning like uh, Rocky on either player's turn to, to get Rocky's effect to add something back. That actually makes it a plus one card. Um, but even so, like, what are you really doing from there? Like, probably not that much, realistically. Uh, but Blast is really good. A lot of times you can search this off of Branga. Um, and it's just a disruption. What's really cool about this is it targets, but not monsters. It never targets a monster. So this can actually negate Dragoon to give you a way to out him. Because what it does is it targets a monster zone and then negates anything in that monster zone. Um, also says it can't attack directly. 
and if the zone was already um, not occupied, uh, then your opponent can't use that zone. So there, you can do some some funky stuff with messing with like your opponent if they have like guard. If they're doing like guard dragon plays. You can actually like cut them off that line, um, which is kind of cool. And then for the rest of them, you've just got generic stuff, triple impermanence. This goes with Ash and Gamma. You know, nine hand traps, probably three of the best hand traps in the format currently. Uh, double Solemn Strike. This was this is definitely a flex spot. If you want more hand traps, if you want the, the Springins traps, you can definitely put those here. But I just wanted something powerful uh, for going first because the deck doesn't set up a ton of disruptions. This is definitely one of the more powerful disruptions your deck can make. And then Unexpected Nightmare. This is just a cool card. I saw somebody techie it in a different deck profile recently. And I was like, that's really cool because when we're in more grindy formats, cards like this are just like insane. Even as just a one of, like if you're just against like a back row deck, like this card feels so busted. You're just gonna go pop, 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 pop. You'll pay some life points, but God damn it. Like when you, if you're gonna pop three cards to and like lose 3000 life points, that's definitely worth it. I think every competitive duelist would agree to that. Um, but yeah, that's it for the main, uh, 40 cards. Of course, we want to keep that consistency. Then we get to the extra, uh, for the extra double Merrymaker, double Explorer. Merrymaker is very, very good. Uh, on summon, he foolish burials, uh, a spring and monster. That's almost always brothers because you're usually discarding a monster for the field spell to summon him in the first place. So then you get to summon that monster back. Uh, that's why we want to play three Sargus because you want to open Sargus with the field spell. If you don't open the field spell, you're already super bricking anyway. So that's why I'm honestly okay with playing three Sargus. Because it's like, if we open, if we don't open the field spell, it literally doesn't matter what's in the hand at all. Because you bricked. You literally can't play. Um, and so three Sargus is fine because, yeah. Uh, and then the, he's, uh, and then Explorer. Explorer is really good. He does the same thing as like the, uh, the trap, except it pops cards like in a, that are, um, I guess, perpendicular to the zone. So you can pop in a plus formation. He targets a zone, detaches material, and then he pops up to the number of cards equal to the materials you attached that are either in that zone or like adjacent to that zone. So you can either pop whatever's above, next to, or below, including spells and traps, including monsters in the extra monster zone or whatever. So that's a very, very cool removal effect. You can catch a lot of people with a really strong removal um, in game one before they realize that they need to be more careful with their placement. Uh, zone wise very very cool though <clears throat> and they both tag out on your opponent's turn so that's really good for other rank fours because the one thing you the one the couple things you can make fairly well is rank four sometimes um which is pretty cool like if you open rocky plus the field spell you get down on a rank four plus merrymaker uh which is really cool um so one redoer one dweller one tornado one honor arc um, this is not the craziest stuff, just good generic rank fours. What's cool with Redoer is that, um, your new continuous spell actually just says if any Exceed you control leaves the field by card effect, uh, it can negate something. So Redoer can actually just trigger that. Also, uh, Redoer, especially versus Trap decks, can get disruption, can get you spells. If you know it's going to be a grindier duel, sometimes you want to just make him because you know, like, what's the point of making Dweller versus a Trap deck, right? I'm going to make, I'm going to make this. this is going to be a recurring, big, annoying body for them to deal with. It's going to draw me cards. It's going to get traps and be a good disruption and just be a pain in the ass combined with my own Spring and Zegzeeds to actually be able to deal with. So really, really cool. Dweller for more like combo oriented stuff. Uh, just to be able to keep them out of grave. It's probably the most impactful one here. Turn one, like making disruption wise. Uh, Tornado Dragon, just nice. Uh, the deck really doesn't have any built-in back row removal. So between this and... Um, I guess the back removal is kind of like Captain Sargus and Explorer, I guess, but it's not, it's not great. Um, but this Unending Nightmare and the One Harpy's Feather Duster kind of like help with that, especially in a more control format. And then Silent Honor Arc, this really isn't even monster removal. It's mainly just something that helps facilitate Zeus because this deck turns out exceeds so freely that Zeus is actually really insane. Also, all your monsters can just attach to your Exceeds as materials, so you can just get, like, a ton of materials on, on like, a Merrymaker and then make a Zeus, and, like, it can be, you know, two, maybe even three material Zeus at times, which is crazy. Speaking of which, the Zeus, I'm only playing one. I think you could theoretically play two, but again, this is a budget deck. This is, like, the one non-budget thing in the whole list. 
and one Vespinato. Vespinato is actually really important though. I do want to iterate this uh, at this point. So your field spell actually says you uh, you can only use it, like you can do its effect, but only if you control no Spring and Zigzeed monsters. And so having something like Vespinato is nice so that you can just, uh, if you come back onto your next turn and like Merrymaker comes back on your opponent's end phase after tagging out, you can just overlay for Vespinato. That clears it out so that now you can use its effect again if you have another Spring and Monster in hand and get rolling on that. Go into an Explorer, use Explorer to clear, start clearing the board. And now you have Vespinata, which is a floater, deals piercing, puts a little more pressure on your opponent damage-wise uh, than a Merrymaker, and uh, just allows you to play more flexibly. You're not, like, locked out of your own field spell. And then Zeus is Zeus. Like, it's an XZ deck. It's Zeus. It's 2021. Should probably have a Zeus. Sorry. <laughs> I know it's expensive, but I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Uh, one Omega, uh, just because you can... Um, Definitely uh, Gamma on your own turn, so very cool. A uh, couple Links. Um, links are kind of only here for the same thing as before. Like I said, um, you want to be able to clear stuff off your field to make sure you can um, uh, use your field spell again. Um, so sometimes you can just link off your... your um, What's his face? Merrymaker with something else to just make a Hita, which is actually not half bad. And then you can maybe reborn an Ash from your opponent, whatever. And I also have a Lambda here. It's just generic, uh, which isn't half bad. Um, I don't know. Really, really what this allows you to do is, is even if you're ending on a board with like Sargus so that like you're never going to clear your board, but still have a Gamma in hand, you can still potentially trigger Gamma. I don't think this will really come up that much. It's just all I could think of like generic, solid like link two and gamma's already in the deck so like i guess it just kind of made a little bit of sense although i don't think it's that good um there but um you could try and play another exit if you wanted and then finishing up we have two copies of sprint the iron dash dragon um this is a cool card it's pretty much just um titanic clad but for springins on the end phase of the turn, it's it's sent to the graveyard. You can just either special summon or add to hand any spring in monster or um What's his name? Oh, no. What's his name? The little dragon guy that's like a mini super poly. He's in all of, like, the, the Ecclesia lore. Oh, no. Oh, Fallen of Albas. Fallen of Albas. Jesus. Um, so pretty much the idea here is if you don't know Merrymaker, also when it tags out on your opponent's turn, if it had two materials when it tagged out or more, it can also uh, Foolish Burial any fusion that has um, Albaz as material. So you can just send this, and then on your end phase, you get to summon a Rocky. Rocky add a card back. Summon a, uh, a Sargus just to get Sargus set up. And so now he's like going to be able to pop cards for you. It's pretty good, um, honestly. It's actually pretty good. So... Um, yeah, that is it for the, that is it for the actual deck profile through and through, um, long story short, springs are really cool, but I think they need the assistance of like a normal summon engine. Now, I think that, um, that like scraps make a lot of sense. They make rank fours, but the deck already kind of vibes with anyway. So like, we're not losing a ton of like extra deck slots. Um, as well as like you go, you can go through stuff like Scrap Recycler as part of the combo to actually have Synergy sending more Spring and stuff to Grave to get you searches, to get you ads, to get you whatever, which is pretty cool. Um, I do think Invoked is also kind of interesting because he's level four that like you could just like pitch a level four off of your field spell, which will get revived off of Brothers, then Normal Summon Alistair get a search, overlay for Alistair. Oh no, no, because you wouldn't be able to put a light in Grave that way. You need to put a light. So I guess that doesn't really work. So screw, screw Invoked. I think Scraps is like the way. Um, but again, it's really expensive. But if I know Konami, and if Konami is smart, they should reprint the scrap stuff uh, as soon as they can. Maybe we'll see Maximum of Gold. Maybe something like that. Uh, maybe Battles of Legend or Brothers of Legend, I should say. Hopefully. But we will obviously see on that. So that's going to do it for me here tonight, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know in the comment section down below what you would change about the list. This is just my ideas here. Let me know what you're thinking, especially for a spring, a pure springs list, but even, even the more competitive variant with like scraps. I'm definitely curious on hearing your guys' thoughts on that, like ratios for what scrap cards we even should be playing, because I know there's discrepancies on whether you should play like a full, full package or whether you just play a condensed one for consistency, less bricks, all that stuff. So Thank you again. I love you. Thank you. Uh, 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 bye.